So the sermon comes now. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Kalach Nisruyina. Merry Christmas. Father James is down in Stockton uh, covering for his uh, son-in-law today. But I'm here, and you're here. Thanks be to God. There's, there's several, several commemorations going on uh, on this Sunday. This, this, the day, it's the day after Christmas, and also the Sunday after Christmas. And uh, one, one thing that we observe today uh, is the Senexis of the Theotokos. Uh, after, after every major feast in the church, the day after that feast, we celebrate a Senexis, a gathering to honor a principal person involved in that feast. So today, of course, we honor in particular Mary, the mother of God. We also honor uh, David the king, Joseph the betrothed, uh, Christ's stepfather, and uh, James, the, bro the brother of, of the Lord. The Synaxis is celebrated especially in, the honor, in honor of the mother of God because she gave birth supernaturally to the Son and Word of God and thus became the instrument of our salvation. I think it is very important that we have a strong feminine component to our faith. We always refer to God in masculine terms, and God does not have a sexual identity the way we physical beings do. God is not exactly male or female, but the way the scriptures refer to God, God is like the male, and the entire universe, including all of us, is female. But then God comes to us in the incarnation, and of course he becomes what? He becomes a male, he becomes a man. But he is born supernaturally of a woman, and she becomes not only his mother, but as, as we are incorporated into Christ, his body, the church, she becomes our mother too. She also brings with her not only her example of devotion and holiness, giving her whole life to bring salvation to us, but she also brings a feminine component to our faith, which I think is very important. Think in your own life about the role of your own mother in your upbringing. Um, I often think about this, <coughs> especially getting into the ministry, getting into the priesthood. I'm much more like my mother than my father. My mother was an extremely gentle, I'm not saying I'm gentle all the time, okay, but she was very devote, very, very devoted. She was very prayerful. She was very gentle. Um, she was a contrast to my father, who'd been in the service for some time, and he could be very, very rough. He could be very hard sometimes. He was much more demanding, and I, I responded to that. I was, a, I was a pretty good kid, but on the other hand, my mother was there always to comfort me. She was the one who read the Bible to me. She was the one who taught me to pray, and really it was her influence, her influence that brought me to God. Sadly, the Reformation in the West stripped away any devotion to the saints, and especially the Mother of God. And along with her feminine influence, this is, this is now in, entirely absent from Protestantism today. So we remember the Theotokos today. We always remember her with great warmth and devotion. She is our mother. We always ask her for her prayers. We always honor her. We always refer to her with great reverence in our services. She is our constant intercessor before her son, our Savior. And then, of course, this gospel reading today, which is for the Sunday after Christmas, yesterday. And suddenly in this gospel passage, we are sort of, we are sort of uh, almost violently drawn back to reality. We celebrated Christmas yesterday, the babe in the manger and the, and, the, and the angels and the shepherds and the glory of God being revealed in humility. But now suddenly, in contrast to our remembrance of the Holy Mother of God, this gospel passage plunges us back into our crazy and violent world why does Herod the king want to know where this Messiah is going to be born? Because he sees in him a potential rival. Suddenly it's politics. He's thinking not of worshiping him, but of killing him. However, as we read in this gospel, Matthew is careful to point out to us how all the events that he's narrating 
are a fulfillment of God's promises in the prophets. The point about prophecy in general is this. Prophecy shows us that God is faithful, that God is in ultimate control of human history. Why does this important episode in the early life of our Lord, what, is, what does this important episode in the early life of our Lord have to tell us? Simply this, the world, yes, is a dangerous place. But God is faithful, and God is in control. God is going to work out his plans no matter what. Here's a very pointed question for us as we prepare for yet another year on this troubled planet. How secure are we? <laughs> How secure do, you th do we think we are? What an appropriate question as we find ourselves still in this ridiculous pandemic. Think about all these poor families who lived in the vicinity of Bethlehem in the time of Herod the Great. All of a sudden, soldiers from Herod come to your house and ask you questions and seize your child and kill him. Why doesn't God stop all the evil in the world? But remember that God grants us the ability to love, and this means that we have the almost magical ability to choose, and that necessitates allowing us to make good and bad choices. And it means that we are going to have to live with the results of our choices. Remember that if God stopped all the violence and evil in the world, he would essentially have to do what? He would have to take from us that gift of free will. We would live in a cartoon world where no one would actually be able to commit an evil act. Or he would have to stop human history. And that's exactly what he promises to do someday. God will stop the evil and God will judge and God will make things right. On the other hand, don't forget that the world is also full of goodness. The world is full of love. Never be fixated on evil. Never think that evil might prevail. Don't listen to the news too much. The good in the world is the work of the Holy Spirit of God who restrains evil and calls everyone to come to Christ. Bear in mind as well that we pray for God's protection. We pray for health and healing. We also pray for a good death. Does God want you and me to be healthy and wealthy? Does God guarantee us a long and trouble-free life? Absolutely not. But God does bless us. So the gospel message here is this. God is in control of the universe. Life is difficult and dangerous. Don't worry. Worry is a sin. The remedy to worry is faith in God. God loves us and he wants us to be saved. We will suffer. And that will be part of God's will for us too and part of our salvation. But God is still in control. God cares. He will provide. Look at what happened to baby Jesus and his parents. As we read these narratives, we think to ourselves how vulnerable they seem to be traveling by night on these roads through the desert to get to Egypt. Are they going to make it? Did they survive? Yes, Mary's son survived to adulthood. Ah, but then he was rejected by his own people, betrayed by one of his friends, and he was murdered. Oh, no. Yes, but his death was purposeful. He died for us. This was also part of God's plan. And then he rose from the dead, conquering death by death, and now we worship him. And his mother, this young woman from Galilee, the Theotokos, the mother of God, whose synaxis we celebrate today, now lives in heaven and she intercedes for us all. Through all the apparent threats and the setbacks and the politics and the problems and the betrayals, God still accomplished his will. God knew what would happen. He intervened where he needed to. God's will prevailed. And here we are, a bunch of Christians in church, celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ 2,000 years later. Here we are celebrating this most holy young woman who became the mother of God. Here we are. As we look back on all of this, now we see it was all part of God's plan. To be specific, here we are celebrating a 100-year anniversary of our parish. Think about the obstacles and the difficulties that this community has endured over the past century. From 1921, the Great Depression, World War II, the Cold War, 
the social revolution of the 60s, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, on and on. And now this pandemic. But here we still are. We're still worshiping God and proclaiming the truth, the good news of salvation in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. God has prevailed. God is still working out his plan of salvation. We still worship the Son of God who was born in Bethlehem. And we still honor his holy mother, the Theotokos, who brought the Savior into the troubled world. Amen. Please stand.